Hey folks, I am Troy and you're watching TroyTube. One of the most frequently asked questions I get is can I change the ink that's in my printer now to the DPI sub premium sublimation ink? And uh, you're going to want to stick around for this video and get some gloves because it might get messy. So a few weeks ago, I posted a photo of some sublimation clocks that I made for Mother's Day gifts. And I'll put the photo on the screen right here so you can see them. And uh, they turned out beautiful, very happy with them. They made wonderful gifts and uh, color was great on them. Uh, you know, you can buy those sublimation clocks on our website at bulkvinyl.com. I used the Troy Tube Designer to uh, use the templates to build the clocks and put my images on there. A lot of people are doing those. It's one of our best selling items is those sublimation clocks. So you might want to check those out when you get a chance. There's a whole video uh, on my channel on how to make that sublimation clock too. And someone commented on my photo and said, how did you make those without the faces being so red on the people? And I thought that was an odd question. And then about a week, maybe a little bit less than a week later, someone asked me if I'd compared our ink to another brand and I uh, had not. I've been focusing mainly on the quality of our own products. Don't really do too many comparisons. But um, I, I, you know, someone else chimed in, which I think is great. Uh, the ER community is great because people like to help each other and provide information and, and share their experiences. And that is very helpful to everyone. And someone else chimed in, like I said, and said, I think that brand of ink is very red looking. And they posted some items that they had made that were indeed very red. So I started to really, you know, when I start to see consistencies here, I start to do some research. And uh, went out, found out a lot of posts about the, the, that brand of ink being red and some others. And uh, I thought, you know, wow, this is really kind of an odd problem. I've not really dealt with this to a degree. And then I started to also find out not only were things turning out very red, but things were like blacks were very brown. And a lot of people were responding to those posts saying that they had pressed it too hot and burn it or something. And that's not the case. Now, I'm a little bit speculating here, but um, it appears that magenta is transferring more than the other inks are or at a faster rate. And um, if you mix grays and blacks with magenta, you're going to get brown. And that's where the brown comes from. So, uh, and I had actually experienced that myself a while back. I tried to make some coasters and they were gray and uh, they, they came out brown. And I, in order to fix that and get around it, I set my printer driver to print only in gray scale and black and white. And that just used the black ink only. And so I moved on, didn't think much about it. But then, like I said, I started seeing all these posts and everything of people talking about uh, these problems. And so I did some tests. Uh, so this printer here has StarCraft ink in it, which is the one that someone asked if, me if I'd compared. And um, so I took one of the photos from the sublimation clock and printed that on the exact same paper, the exact same settings, uh, two different EcoTank printers, one with that ink in it, one with our DPI sub ink in it, and pressed it onto the same items. And as you can see, one turned out very red and one did not. Matter of fact, the shadow along the edges is even red where it's supposed to be gray like this. And um, so I, I looked for a solution. There were some people who were suggesting to go into the printer driver and adjust the levels of the ink, which I thought, again, was kind of odd. I've been dealing with inkjets for 30 years and for general printing, you really don't really have to adjust those things. My experience has been unless you're working in like advertising or producing uh, items that need exact color matches to CMS colors or something, you do re really don't have to mess with those things and everything comes out photorealistic and to the naked eye it looks fine. So uh, then the other suggestion that I saw was someone, uh, there were some people saying, well, maybe you need an ICC profile. And an ICC profile may get around that issue because it does adjust the ink coming out of the printer uh, per color. Uh, but that's not the purpose of an ICC profile. The, uh, I think ICC profiles have become kind of a buzzword in the craft community and people throw it around and they don't really know what it means. An ICC profile is really a, you know, what it boils down to is it's a match in the adjustments of the printer between the ink and the paper in order to match colors near exact uh, from one job to the next. Uh, so if you're printing, uh, let's say if you if you were making a hundred 
coasters for somebody that has a corporate logo on it, has specific colors that uh, you want all these to be consistent. And then six months later, they want another hundred. Well, you want the second hundred, the second batch to match the first batch and not be able to tell with the naked eye that there's a difference. So you don't end up with, you know, mint green on one and kind of turquoise on the other or something like that, uh, that you can tell, like I said, with the naked eye by looking at it. So both of those things, adjusting the ink in a printer driver and an ICC profile may get you around the problem, but it's really just a workaround and it's not resolving the real issue, okay? I'm, you know, I, I'm a problem solver and, a, and my degree's in electronic engineering. And so in electronics and digital world and everything, you don't treat a symptom. You have to fix the problem or it'll just keep being a problem. And uh, same thing in medical, you know, I, I have a real problem with doctors that never treat the root cause. They just want to give you medicine to treat a symptom. So, um, let, you know, looking at the root cause, um, it seems to be the ink that people are using. So we're going to do some experiments today. Uh, you know, after putting a lot of thought into that question, people were asking me, um, and, and considering what we might be able to do as a workaround to get around some of this, I thought, you know, uh, I'm an engineer, I'm a problem solver. Why can't I come up with a solution that I agree on and not be so black and white on the topic because people are out there doing this and changing out the ink in their printers already. And, uh, you know, I'm, I've just always been just this real black and white guy on certain topics where I just don't think it's a good idea, but it's something that deserves a look. And, uh, you know, I did some research, kind of thought about this a lot, try to come up with the best methodology to change out the ink in a printer. And there are flush kits out there where you can flush all your ink out and things. It can get really messy. It's not too terribly technical, but uh, you know, we'll, I'll show you how to get into the printers and how to do this and how to drain it. But rather than using a flush kit uh, and introducing another fluid into the tank, maybe diluting your ink with a clear fluid that makes it lighter until it completely gets flushed out or, or whatever the case may be, I thought, well, if we could drain all the ink out of the printer, then I, I would probably be okay with that. I'd rather have it mix with a very minuscule amount of a previous ink than to f try to flush it out and have it mix with another fluid like rubbing alcohol or the flush fluid, whatever it is, and uh, just risk, you know, I, I thought it, you know, you're risking damaging the heads. I, you know, just all these things run through my mind about what could happen and what's the best way to get the best result without too much risk. And I think the best way to do that, like I said, is to drain the ink out of the printer. A few ways you could do that. You could print till all your ink's gone. The problem is once the printer gets very low on ink and it runs out, then you, the, you know, the printer is probably going to stop printing and then you may have a lot more magenta than you do blue or whatever and you really can't get all the ink out that way. So, um, you know, I, I thought, well, let's figure out how to drain the ink out of the printer and, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So this printer, as I said, has the StarCraft ink in it and it's about half full, uh, at least the visible part of the tank. I'm not sure how big those tanks are in there. Uh, they may be bigger than what you see here, but uh, what I'm seeing is about half full of the visible window. And uh, I think that is about the whole tank that really though. Um, and then, uh, so what I'm gonna do first is we're going to fill each color the rest of the way with DPI sub ink. Um, but I'm only gonna do this one color at a time. And after each color, uh, I'm going to print and press a, a, an image and see what the effects are on each color by mixing our ink with it. Um, I don't really recommend, again, mixing inks. Uh, I don't think too much can happen because it's mostly water. Um, but, you know, I, I just, it, it, there's unknowns. I don't know, especially a lot of these inks that come from China. You don't know what's in them. Uh, there's no way to know for sure what, you know, they, they're could be something odd in it or something could turn to jelly i don't know but i don't think so um but we're going to do this with each color first and then after we get results from that see what it's like we're going to drain the entire printer uh with uh you know with syringe and uh suck all the ink out of it basically uh one of the things uh, i should point out is when i mix the inks in there there are little hose, rubber hoses, lines that go from the tanks to the print heads, and those have ink in them. So I'm probably going to print about 10 or 15 pages. I have some full pages I've created to 
flush that ink out of there. It's like a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of uh, yellow, one of cyan, one of your separate sheets for each color. And I'll probably get 10 or 15 of those to cycle that ink through the lines till we get the, the newer ink you know, printing and see if we can get, uh, you know, some improved quality by mixing the inks. And then when we flush them out, I'll do the same thing. Uh, I'll probably be able to get most of the ink out of those lines. Uh, so I might only be able to have, need to print like five pages or something like that to you know, get the residual out of there. But uh, that's one of the things that if you do this process, you want to do uh, because you can't forget about that line that goes from the tanks to the heads. Uh, it will have ink in it from the last time you print it. So I'm gonna switch the camera around. One thing you wanna wanna have on hand, rubbing alcohol, paper towels, lots of them, and gloves. You might even wanna wear an old shirt or an apron because this could get messy. Uh, you're gonna see me put a lot of paper towels down inside the printer and around everything to catch any little splashes or anything, uh, or any spills that might happen. Hopefully we won't have too much problem with that, but it can be messy, so make sure you're prepared for that. Okay, so as I mentioned, the first uh, color we're going to put in here is uh, black. I'm going to fill this the rest of the way up with black DPI sub sublimation ink. One of the things I should probably point out while I'm here is some printers, this is a very tight fit and you have to wiggle the bottle a little bit uh, to get it on there because we provide the 140 ml bottles for each color. Uh, most of our competitors sell much smaller bottles of ink and it, it kind of makes our look, ink look like it's a lot more expensive, but when you calculate it out per ml, uh, it's not really that expensive <laughs> compared to the others. It's only like one or two cents per milliliter uh, more. Uh, so we topped that off with black, and now I'm gonna have to uh, you know, find a way to just kind of get that mixed in there. It mixed a little bit while it's filling it, of course, but uh, you know, in order to get that in there, I probably will have to, uh, shake it or something or I may have to find if I can find a little tiny straw or something I can stick down in the thing and kind of stir it but um, I'll figure that out and I'll let you know what I do to resolve that. As you see I'm printing the full pages uh, that will uh, hopefully use up all the ink in those lines and uh, you know just, these are just full pages of the one color black that I'm working on. Um, kind of curious as we get through this if it's going to uh, if I'm going to be able to see a difference in the color of the ink uh, as it, get, it progresses through this and it gets into the new ink, but uh, we'll see. I don't think I will since it's black, but we'll, we'll see what happens here. Well, this was not what I was expecting. Uh, just by filling the black tank uh, with our ink and mixing the two, uh, the color change was tremendous. And this was the original with the uh, magenta issue. And so, but now, if you look, you'll notice uh, that there's blue around the outside, maybe even a hint of yellow there. Um, but the it would appear to me that the uh, black ink is not strong enough or something, or maybe the other colors aren't strong enough to overtake magenta. Uh, so that is a uh, really shocking difference just by mixing the one color. So we're gonna do the other colors and after I finish those, I will come back and show you all the finished items and how they change and progress through the process. Okay, so uh, after I filled the t ink wells up the rest of the way with our DPI, uh, sub premium sublimation ink. I did each chamber one at a time and then printed and pressed an item uh, as we went through this to see if I can narrow down where the problem was. And uh, so when I did that, uh, as I explained earlier, I printed these full sheets uh, of each color to purge uh, the, the ink lines and get those emptied out. And I wanted to show you the differences here. And so uh, this was, let me change them around here. This was the first page I printed with black and this was the 10th page. It might be kind of hard to see on camera. This one is just a shade darker. I can really barely tell. It's just a little bit darker, not too big of a difference. And then for cyan, uh, same thing basically. Uh, very little difference between these two. With the naked eye, I can't tell much difference at all. Uh, there might be just a hair difference, but not really able to tell much at all with that one. With magenta, there was some difference. 
uh, that you can see. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but here in person with the naked eye, I can definitely tell this is darker than this, the first page. So this is the first page. Uh, it didn't seem to change much at 10 pages. So uh, as you see here, I marked them. This is the 12th page that printed uh, in order to cycle it through. It may have had a little more ink in the well or something. But, um, you know, this is definitely a little bit darker and a little bit more even uh, than what uh, that one is. And then this is the a, a big difference here. I, you can certainly see that on camera. That this was the first page. This was the last page, and the yellow is much more saturated than uh, here. And so my suspicion is that the magenta is overtaking the other colors, uh, specifically the black and the yellow. Uh, but you'll see here in a moment when I show you the final products what happened. So here are the two that uh, we I showed you at the start of the video. This one was printed uh, with. DPI sub premium ink. This one was printed with StarCraft ink and uh, you see the how red it is and everything. Same setting, same paper, everything, uh, just uh, different ink. And this is what people were complaining about. So uh, when I did the change out, I'm going to leave this one up here so we can compare. Uh, the initial swap out for black was a tremendous difference. I'm printed it a little bit smaller so I could label it easy. Um, but a big difference, but you see along the edges, you now, instead of it being magenta, it's cyan around kind of a, the halo of that. That's a shadow. That's a drop shadow that's supposed to be there. But uh, when it's mixing the ink, it should come out looking you know, pretty gray. And uh, this one is cyan instead of magenta. And so then the next one that I did was yellow. And then with yellow, uh, you can see that it turned a little green. Um, so, you know, the cyan and the yellow being more saturated. And that is uh, uh, definitely a, an evidence of why it's, you know, it's the yellow is more saturated than uh, the other ink is. And the color here and the image itself is a little bit more saturated, but with that yellow or greenish halo from the cyan and yellow. And then here was the big difference. This was after I changed out for magenta. And so I still have, at this point, I still have cyan to do, but uh, you see the saturation is much heavier. Uh, it's actually oversaturated a little bit if you compare it to this original one. Um, it is oversaturated, but it looks a lot better. You see the shadow is gray. Everything's just, you know, like I said, more saturated, it's oversaturated, just a hair, but definitely looks a lot better after I put the magenta in it. And then I did the cyan, and really almost no difference between these two. Uh, and the cyan on the sheets was the one that was the hardest to tell any difference between the two, so I didn't expect there to be that much difference here. But uh, definitely a big difference just mixing the inks. So uh, that was uh, kind of evidence that I'm on the right path, that some of these inks out there are oversaturating with magenta, or magenta is over transferring and overtaking some of the other uh, color. So now we're going to move the camera around and I'm going to show you how to completely drain the ink out of the printers. Okay, so I have uh, this EcoTank 2750 opened up. Uh, again, a lot of the printers don't open like this. Uh, there is either screws underneath the panel or uh, if you open the panel, there's a little door that you flip down that lets you uh, release that and lift it up but uh, some of them don't open up very far. They have a little catch on them. Haven't explored that yet, but you'll wanna Google your individual printer model and see how you can disassemble and get this lid open. And I don't think it'll be too hard on most of them and uh, shouldn't, be, uh, shouldn't be that bad. A lot of them that uh, open up, uh, you know, makes it really easy. And the goal here is we need to get the uh, pieces out of here that are connected to the feed lines from the ink. And with this print head all the way to the right, like it normally is, it's kind of latched in there. Um, so the easiest way sometimes to do that, to get it freed up, is to unplug the power and plug it in. Wait for it to start its cycle. Uh, I think most of the time they come on automatically when you apply power. You don't have to press the power button. But when it does, it'll move over and kind of release and kind of do its thing and unplug power when it happens and that will let you be able to freely move that head just kind of gently move it don't do anything uh, real hard on it and then this one has one little screw here uh, that we'll take out and then we remove this cover there's a couple little plastic clips there so you just pop that off 
and you'll see uh, essentially the eco tank is has lines that are feeding uh, these uh, which are essentially like the cartridges that the other model printers take and so the black uh, yellow magenta and cyan and so each one of them has a different color hose so you can identify it from the tanks not sure why they didn't make them match the colors but whatever um, so we'll take these out and if you'll see uh, there's an opening on the bottom of it and what I have is a 10 ml syringe this is kind of like the ones like you give uh, kids medicine with or whatever um, and this little end fits right in here and I'm going to open this to allow air uh, flow under there and then we can just draw that ink through the system and push that in there nice and tight so it doesn't uh, drip or leak out and before I go too much further you'll notice I have gloves on but I meant to put paper towels down in here and uh, guard against any spills or anything and do this uh, as mess free as possible and you'll see it's a good thing I did that and we'll just suck all that ink right out of the tanks You don't want to go too fast with it because it is a, a vacuum uh, more or less and then you're going to want to dispose of that ink into a container I'm just going to put it in this stemless wine glass it's best to use like a plastic jug or something something that has a small top and a bigger base um, that way if you knock it over it might not be so uh, bad but um, we'll keep pulling these out of here and we'll essentially just drain all the ink out of the tanks and out of the lines and dispose of it and then refill it with ink and then I'll print another uh, probably five pages or so of those full color pages uh, to do each ink individually and get it, the lines cleaned out and get all the ink cycled through the printer and this will take several um, times for each of these tanks to get all the ink out of it again you're going to want to have some rubbing alcohol on hand um, we actually sell these syringes and the gloves on our website as a kit uh, so you'll get uh, four of these syringes one for each color because you don't want to risk getting any different color inks in there you can rinse these off and everything and reuse them but I just like to make sure I don't accidentally get any colors mixed uh, while I'm doing this and so I'll just continue to do this I'll do it for each of the colors this ink is really really thin and it makes a mess when you drip it or drop any of it uh, so these paper towels are essential to keep it clean and now I'm starting to hear some air coming through the line so we're getting close to having all the ink out of the black and when you think you've got it all keep going because there's probably more the black is drained completely and made a little bit of a mess here so I'll clean this up and I'll wipe that uh, part down real well get it cleaned back uh, cleaned up with alcohol and put it back in and then we'll move on to the next colors I'm not going to bore you with the entire thing uh, but essentially that's what I want to do to each color and then uh, we're going to refill this with ink and uh, actually I'm going to convert this back to a regular ink printer and uh, use it at home uh, but uh, instead of sublimation ink but I'll do the same process I'll put the ink in I'll print uh, quite a few pages uh, you know, probably five pages or so of those uh, full color pages of each color to cycle that ink through and get it all the way through the system and uh, we should be up and running again so once I do that I'll flip back over to the camera and I'll show you the result all right so now we are finished with the black it's completely drained there's probably just a little tiny bit of ink left in there and we're going to switch over now and do the yellow and we'll just drain all it out at the same way um, and uh, one of the things I should have pointed out is that when you open these things up it allows airflow uh, with them closed you cannot draw the ink uh, through the system uh, with those closed and I wanted to show you this real quick as you can see there is still some residual ink in uh, this piece and there's going to be a little bit in the lines of tank 
Uh, that's why when we fill it back up with ink, we're going to print about five or ten pages uh, to, to wash that out and get it out of the system. Another thing to watch out for is uh, not to crimp the line. Don't twist this around because uh, if you crimp this line, you're going to you're just, just going to feel a lot of suction when you try to draw the plunger on the syringe back. Um, so just make sure you're you're okay with that and you have this open um, and uh, you should have a clear path to, to draw the ink out of the system that way. All right, so now we've uh, cleaned everything up, wiped these down really well after uh, draining all the ink. Uh, again, stuff all this with paper towels, cover everything with paper towels, have alcohol, gloves, everything, old t-shirt uh, or an apron, whatever you wanna do. And uh, cause this stuff does get messy. And one little drop splat hits and it will splash and go everywhere. And so we're gonna put this little cover back on here. Snaps back in place. Be careful not to drop your screw and lose it down inside the printer. And now it's back together. And now we're gonna refill it with regular Epson ink. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna convert this one back to regular ink and see what happens. I think everything will be fine. Um, and uh, see what the, how it goes here. So here's why it's so important to print these uh, sheets, these color sheets, uh, to circulate the ink because uh, on the third sheet, it started doing this, so uh, no ink to the print heads. And uh, so I, I thought, well, this is, that's pretty drastic, so there's something wrong here. And I uh, thought, well, let's, let's take a look and see what's going on. And it turned out that there's still a lot of air in the lines and in these uh, pieces down here. So uh, what we're gonna do is basically the same thing. We're just not gonna drain the ink all the way out. And uh, we're gonna, we have to open these again to, to get airflow. And we'll pull these out and uh, show you one of them to you. Here's the yellow, and you see that it's empty. Uh, so there's air in here, and it's got kind of a, an air lock in, uh, in the chamber there. So uh, what we have to do is basically use a syringe and just draw the ink through the lines and get all the air out um, and fill it up with ink. And you're, so you're basically priming uh, the lines is what's happening. Now you'll see, um, See the color difference, you see this yellow and then this is kind of orangish looking. This orange looking is the actual regular yellow ink. So uh, you're, this is gonna be mixed here for the first uh, little while when you print and that's why it's important to do those pages. So uh, we'll draw some of that ink through there and uh, get these lines primed real good. Try to get the air out of them and then we'll do our pages, print our pages again and see how things go. Well, there you have it. It did indeed get messy. <laughs> it just, you know, the little ink droplets and splashes and drips out of the syringe and things. So if you don't go down this path, make sure you use plenty of paper towels, have the alcohol, gloves, uh, everything you need to you know, keep the, if you make a mess, to keep it out of your printer. Um, the other thing I'll say is that little tiny screw that's in there that removes that cover, um, I'd recommend using a magnetic screwdriver because you do not want to drop that little tiny screw and lose it down inside your printer. That would be a really you know, nightmare to, to deal with. Uh, so, you know, I would, I would you'd be careful with that. And, um, you know, I, this printer, uh, like I said, I uh, mixed the sublimation ink uh, DPI sub premium ink with Starcraft and you saw the results after especially after uh, the magenta was uh, mixed and how it improved the print quality um, the, and clarity of that um, and then I drained it I uh, you know basically used the syringe to draw all the ink through the lines and, and out of the system uh, that I could there was still some residual ink in there and then I actually converted that one like I said back to regular ink it, uh, the, probably the biggest thing that I had to do was um, after I filled it with the regular ink, I had to use the syringe the same way I drained it, but to draw it through the lines and through that cartridge piece and get it filled up and uh, you know primed through the system. And after that, I did some of the, the uh, full page color pages, one for each color, 
and uh, let it print, make sure that I could print a full page of that without any problems and it looked good and everything. And then I printed a photo and I'll show you the first one I printed, came out pretty well. And I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but there's some little tiny lines in there that you can see. And so just a print head alignment corrected that. I uh, should have known I was gonna have to do that because you're in there moving those heads around, popping those cartridges in and out and everything. And you're kind of messing things up. But um, you know, just some little lines and then uh, here's the final one I printed with regular ink out of that printer after I converted it back and uh, put the uh, regular ink back in it and it came out really quite flawless. So quite impressive steps. Um, the other things I'll say is all of these printer models seem to be different as to how you can get into them to do this or not. Uh, the uh, I have an EcoTank 15,000. The entire lid on it lifts up. It doesn't open as much as that one does. This 2750 is probably one of the easier ones to work on, I would think. Um, but it does lift up. I didn't take it apart, but I did see the little screw on the cover. There looks like there's a lever. I just haven't Googled that. So if, you, if you're going to do one of those, one, I'd be super careful because that's a much more expensive printer. Uh, but also uh, Google it, understand what you're doing before you work on these things. Um, the 4800 does not uh, necessarily open up. It has, if you lift the control panel, there's a drawer, uh, a little panel that drops down and it allows you to open the lid, but it only opens like this far and uh, there's a little catch. I haven't investigated that to see if you can unhook it and open it the rest of the way. I think I could probably do it with it open just that little bit. You'd have to get back in there to take the cover off and do the cartridges. Be super careful not to spill much ink in there. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, if you depending on what model you have, Google it. Google, you know, assembly, disassembly instructions or how to open or something like that. I'm sure you can find it. You might even find other YouTube videos where someone has taken apart your specific model. Uh, so I'd probably start with YouTube there. But this method seemed to work real well uh, to, uh, one, mixing the ink seemed to go okay. I didn't, and the only result I had out of that was a better print color quality and clarity. Um, and then, uh, you know, switching it out and draining it completely was a lot more tedious. It was a lot more work, um, but, you know, it did work okay. Uh, what I would say is if you're going to drain it just for the purposes of switching the sublimation ink, um, I would probably just draw as much out as you can, put the new ink in, draw that through the lines and prime it, and then do your, uh, you know, a few of these full color pages, uh, your, your nozzle check, print head alignments, uh, you know, maybe a power cleaning to get everything cycled through and uh, prime it. Um, power cleaning is probably last resort. If, if you, you know, don't have to do it, don't do it. Uh, so if everything looks like it's printing okay and you can print like, you know, maybe five of those pages out without any problems, then you're probably going to be okay and, and good to go from that point forward. So interesting experiment. Uh, definitely a little messy. Uh, I got a little ink on my hands, not too bad. But uh, again, I used a, I just used a stemless wine glass to put the ink in to discharge it because it is bigger at the base and smaller at the top. So it didn't splash out of there or anything. Uh, I would recommend a jug if you can, if you have one, you know, a milk jug or a orange juice carton or something that has a smaller opening at the top with a bigger base. And you can shoot that ink down in there with a syringe as you drain it. And that way it doesn't get everywhere. So, um, I think that's about all I can cover in that one. Uh, that's a that was a pretty intense video. So um, as as far as what I did anyway. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions or comments, post them down below the video. Uh, we are going to offer those syringes and gloves on our website as kind of a, a kit for people if you want to convert your printer. Um, I'm not going to take responsibility for anybody's printer. This is all on your own. Uh, to do this. I've showed you how to do it, what I did, what worked for me, and uh, if you decide to tackle that, then uh, we'll we'll have those uh, little kits, as I'll call it. Uh, it's really these syringes and, and a, a couple pairs of the nitro gloves uh, to get you through that, and uh, have rubbing alcohol, paper towels on hand in a container, and uh, just be super careful with it. So again, if you have any questions or comments, post them down below the video. Hey folks, I just wanted to take a minute to thank everyone for the love, kindness, and support that you've provided to Tammy and I over the past several years. It's been almost 10 years, believe it or not, been eight and a half years since we bought our first Cricut. So we're almost a decade into new careers for both of us. So when you buy great products like Orcal 651, 
Thermoflex, heat transfer vinyl, DPI sub, premium sublimation ink, blanks, any of those things that you buy from our site help support us and our employees and our employees' families. Don't forget about our subscription and membership, which gives you uh, access to our e-learning courses and also significant discounts on product purchases as well. So if you like our videos and everything we do, click the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. And when you do, click the bell next to it so that you'll get notified when I publish new videos. And then in the video description, there's also links to all of our Facebook groups, our Facebook pages. So joining those groups, liking our pages, leaving us reviews helps us out immensely and we thoroughly enjoy every minute of this journey along uh, this path with you to bring uh, love, kindness, and hope to the world using your crafting hobby or small business, whether it's been in person, on the phone, or through social media.